All right, we're going to continue our discussion on collaboration and coordination from ARCHICAD to other formats. Uh, and we're going to talk about DWG this time. As I mentioned before in the previous uh, video on IFC, uh, check out the link in the description for that video. Um, we, uh, we can save out an IFC model, but that really only saves the geometry and the information attached to model geometry. It doesn't save out any of our 2D stuff. So when we want to coordinate fully, we need to save out PDFs and or DWGs. And DWGs can be a little bit tricky to get right in ARCHICAD uh, for the simple reason that uh, things like layers, uh, things like fills, are handled completely differently in ARCHICAD than they are in AutoCAD. Uh, a simple example of this, if we take a look at ARCHICAD's fill tool, um, there are two pens associated with the fill tool. There's a foreground and a background pen uh, for every fill in ARCHICAD. Uh, in AutoCAD, there's only one pen um, for the fills. Uh, another example are the layers. Uh, if we take a look at the layers in ARCHICAD, they really can be applied to anything regardless of actual attribute or appearance. Um, we're really only controlling whether something's on or off, locked or, or unlocked, um, or whether it's intersecting with other elements. We're not defining pens based on layer. We're not defining colors and, and line weights based on layer or line types based on layer. Um, a line, for example, can be on the ARCHICAD layer and it can use any number of uh, line types um, and combinations of line types and pen weights. So if we have a line on the ARCHICAD layer that uses hidden line and pen 8 and another one that ha uses hidden line and pen 5 and then we drag both of these down and both of these are now using double dash line we've just defined four new layers in an ARCHICAD file uh, whereas or sorry an AutoCAD file and ARCHICAD is able to uh, place all four of those unique line um, uh, combinations onto a single layer uh, so the the layers and the fills are, are a big example of, of why DWGs can be difficult in ARCHICAD. Uh, so the first thing to note is that we want to be uh, kind of deliberate about what we're saving out to a DWG. So in our collaboration folder, um, I'm just going to drop a new folder in here and we are going to call this folder export to DWG. Oh, sorry, that's not correct. New folder, export to DWG. And I can delete that. Um, and this is going to give me a set view. Um, so I have a layer combination. Uh, I should have a layer combination in here that is DWG for structure. Um, I have uh, the ability to hide the wall skins, uh, which can be really helpful if you're sending a model to a structural. Um, I also have the ability to uh, set the model view option to export for DWG. I'm uh, just quickly going to create a, um, a new option here that basically shows uh, door and uh, let's actually set this to show the entire door but just the window openings and we're going to say this is DWG to engineer. Um, so I've simplified the model down even more. I'm only showing window openings. Um, I don't know what's going on there. We'll just keep moving on. Uh, we also have the ability uh, with, um, let's go to our document menu and graphic overrides. This is a great new uh, feature. We can set to Z export. And I just want to give you an overview of what that means for anybody not using my template. Uh, if I go to my graphic overrides options, um, Z export has one rule, and that rule um, says that, or it's named DWG fills. So I'm handling fills in a very specific way for DWGs. If I go to edit that rule, you can see that I've set the rule to say um, all element types are affected, all element types are going to have an override similar to the renovation filter. Um, I'm overriding fill types and I'm overriding uh, pen color. So all fills are actually going to become empty and all fill pens will be 51 and transparent. And that's going to avoid any uh, kind of nasty whiteout fills that you get when you save a DWG. 
Um, it's just going to simplify it way down uh, to where they're really uh, the recipient's only going to receive line work. Um, so from here, I kind of have a preview of what my DWG is going to look like right away. I can see I probably have some layer cleanup to do with some of my appliances and my, my handles that I don't necessarily want to go out in my DWG. Uh, maybe some site drafting here that could be cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, but really, once I have uh, everything set up the way I want, I'm just going to save a view here. And um, those view settings are, are going to be saved with this. So if I go down a uh, story and we're going to save this as the basement um, DWG, and I can even go up and save this as the roof DWG. Um, obviously, I have to go into my layer combination and turn my uh, roof layers on. or put my roofs on the correct layer. Um, so now I have a DWG for structure. Uh, so I have all of these DWGs ready to go out. Uh, once that's done, I can go to my publisher settings. Um, And I uh, can create uh, views to DWG that's in my publisher set here uh, so that I can recreate this every time. Um, and just like we looked at before, I want to actually create a shortcut for this. So I'm going to pull up my organizer and I have views to DWG, model space essentially, and I'm going to add a shortcut here for those views. Um, I'm going to go to the publishing properties and I'm going to make sure that this is publishing to the correct folder. Um, I'm going to create a real folder structure for this and I'm going to make sure that the format for all of this content is going to DWG. And you'll notice once that's set to DWG, I have options for further editing options here. Uh, sorry, I have translator options for further editing as is output. Um, pen and index number settings I generally use for further editing unless I get special uh, um, suggestions or comments or recommendations for improvements from the consultant. Uh, I also recommend soliciting those suggestions because you just never know whether they're going to be unhappy with the, what you're sending them and keeping it to themselves and, and just kind of biting their lip. If we can make their lives easier it makes our lives easier. Uh, so under the translator settings if you do have to make some fine-tuned adjustments uh, there's a few things to look at here under uh, save options. Um, there is the paper space option. There is the single or XREFT option. Uh, typically, I set the place drawings to a single DWG file and set it to a model space. Um, so that's, that's one important setting under save options, single DWG and model space. And you notice once I save it to model space, I can no longer affect the uh, place drawings into. Uh, so that's one, uh, one thing that's really important to do is to change this to a single DWG before you change it to model space under save layouts into. Um, then from here we have options uh, for handling things like layers uh, like we talked about before. Um, there are layer name conversions. For example, the ARCHICAD layer becomes layer zero in uh, a DWG so it works with AutoCAD. Um, there's also some substitutes and renames for pen-based layer naming. Um, there's ways to control pens. Uh, we can have color conversions from AutoCAD, ARCHICAD to AutoCAD. <coughs> we can adjust the line types. Uh, again, adjusting scale, um, set all elements by layer. Um, fills, uh, one thing that's really helpful if you do save out fills uh, and you don't have just a blanket override for all of your DWG output for fills, um, you can have a fill conversion which um, is really helpful for some fills that get masked out and things like that. You could basically say convert all fills or certain fills to uh, empty fill. So you could be a little bit more selective about which fills are converted to empty fill um, than it's easily done with the graphic overrides. Um, font style can be handled and adjusted uh, here. Uh, one thing to note is under the custom functions, the save extra option, um, there are three checkboxes here. Um, and the only one that should ever be checked is the convert labels to leaders um, so that Arch AutoCAD is able to handle ARCHICAD's uh, labeling a little bit better. Um, 
typically don't want to see the other two checked um, because you don't want uh, each library part to be a single DWG block um, in all cases. Um, and then you also don't want the original blocks. Uh, what this will do, um, if I give you an example here, let me uh, go down a story. Uh, so I have this sync object here, for example, and the default view for this sync object is to show the two base and sync. Now, if I had a round sync in here, for example, and I stumbled upon, across, this, across this by accident, uh, basically the round sync will save back out with the original default objects block. Um, so all of your syncs are then going to show as this two base and sync. Um, so it's, it's actually really important that that translator option is not checked. And again, that's the store original blocks option. We don't want to see that in our DWGs. Uh, so once all of that's set, uh, really all I have to do is uh, publish the selected option. And it's going to save out those DWGs ready to go. Uh, and again, as a follow-up uh, comment, I'd like to say that I highly recommend saving out at very least a screenshot of what these views uh, should look like. Um, if not, maybe even a full set of PDF documents to go along with your DWGs, just so uh, the consultant has some kind of reference. Um, it'll add a little bit of clarity. For example, if we look at this floor plan, these windows aren't exactly clear. Uh, this being a remodel, it's not exactly clear what's being uh, added as new wall versus existing. Um, so, and that, that's intentionally so, uh, trying to eliminate a lot of those fills. Um, simplifying the DWG for the recipient, but it also might add a little bit of unclarity to their drawings. So uh, that's all I've got for DWGs. I hope this was helpful, and I'll talk to you next time.